Hi, I'm Matt Baker and welcome to my LEGO YouTube channel, I'm Bricking It. In this channel, I'll be reviewing LEGO sets as well as doing the occasional speed build, mostly focusing on large display sets, with the occasional focus on the LEGO Ideas sets and Star Wars UCS. Today I'll be reviewing the 1989 LEGO Batwing with my show host here, Benny. Let's get started. And here it is, the 1989 LEGO Batwing. This set is, was released in 2020 and is the uh, sibling to the uh, 1989 Batmobile released a year before in 2019. Um, this is set number 76161. Uh, for the 18 uh, plus range and has uh, 2,363 pieces and three minifigures. Uh, and on the front of this lovely gorgeous matte black box you can see the model from above, uh, very detailed. And on the back you have a different angle of the model. Um, and on the side you have a beautiful artistic por uh, portrait of Batman's cow, which I like this little bit of detail. It just adds something extra to the box um, beyond the set, so I think it's really cool. Also on the back, it has it shown how you can warm out this set because it can be warm mounted and put on a stand. It also has how it looks on a stand, and further along, it has a little stand for the little minifigures and shows how that's represented just there. That's pretty much all the detail that the box shows. Let's move on to the actual set. Before we get into this, I should say that the one thing I didn't like about the box, despite the fact that it looks beautiful and artistic, is that there's no, other than the minifigure stand in that picture, there's no minifigures displayed on the edges and no names underneath. So if you weren't familiar with the 1989 Batman, you might not know the names of all the minifigures. Uh, or I'd like to think you know of Batman. But for example, the Joker is actually the mime Joker from that movie, which I didn't know because I've not watched it. Um, so when I first saw it, I was trying to figure out who it was. I knew it was the Joker, but I didn't know which quite which one. So that would have been a, like a little bit of detail that would be beautiful to see on the side of the box, but unfortunately it's not there. Now let's move on to the actual model. First thing you should kind of like get impacted by is the pure size of it. So if I just stick my hand in, it's massive. I'll put other models later on side by side to just kind of show you how big this set is. But it's huge. Um, and despite being so big and just made of black and some grey blocks, uh, it's not actually that repetitive. Yeah, it's symmetrical, um, so you got to get past that. But they, they make you build it in such a way that it's not hugely repetitive, uh, which is a big pro for me because I'm not a fan of repetitive procedures. The other thing you might notice is the shape they've managed to get straight edged bricks and make them round on the edges and represent the Batwing itself and the Batman logo which I think is also really cool and really well done um, there is a slight con to that um, the way that they've added the curvature of the edges here which is like this one piece is attached with loads of hinge pieces the way they've attached it to the main part of the wing is with elastic bands so this is what I mean by the elastic band so this is the edge held on with an elastic band down here and oh, my elastic band down there now there are two additional clips so there's one clip up here and one clip down there which more firmly holds it but these elastic bands can be prone to breaking if put under a lot of strain um, over a long period of time so that's why I don't like elastic bands being used to hold things on but I didn't see any other way in which they could do it so zooming out and looking at much more of the finer detail, we have some lovely, uh, what looks like exhaust vent pieces to, uh, designed to look like exhaust vents. Uh, we have some flaps here that move up and down, as well as the fins, both sides, can again move up and down, so you can position them, position them as you like. Uh, we have some uh, weaponry, so we have some machine guns here, turrets there, unfortunately they don't fire, um, and some other Lego pieces down here designed to look like, again, more weaponry. Um, I like the way in which there's uh, some of these pieces, these angle pieces, stacked on end to just add extra curvature to the model. There are some on the back as well. These 2x4 angle plates are exactly the same as the ones at the front, and again, just add a bit more of the curvature to the tail of the Batwing, and just adds a nice little bit of depth. So now we'll take a look at the cockpit. To get to the cockpit, you just have to lift up. It's not attached. Just slotted in this... Um, one whole piece of black T2 
tinted plastic um, and underneath that you've got the cockpit so you've got the chair that's larger than minifigure scale uh, the back can move forwards and backwards but it's just usually sat in that back position uh, you've got two levers that move um, and you've got loads of decal stickers all the way around the edge um, there weren't too many probably about six or seven um, again they weren't too much of a faff to apply my best advice is to use tweezers or two sets of tweezers one at either end just apply them nice and straight uh, nothing bothers me more than a wonky sticker um, and you have another decal just at the back here uh, which is on top of like a little boot flap if you will that stores two red crowbars uh, which have a little purpose later uh, in mounting it to the wall or getting to the mount to mount it onto the wall um, but yeah that's everything that's inside the cockpit just put that back on there so that's the front side of the model uh, if I rotate it round now I've had it so it's facing down as opposed to facing up because uh, I just think it looks much cooler diving down like that you can see the stand and the plaque so I'll just zoom into the plaque. So there's the plaque mounted on the front when you build it, but again I got it facing down. The instructions have the model facing upwards, so this would technically be the front of the stand. Um, yeah, I'll give you a chance to pause it, just to read it if you want to. Now let's take a look at the stand. Um, from what I've seen, I haven't heard many good reviews about the stand, uh, only because it is in that greyish tone as opposed to black. Um, black seems a lot more appropriate for the model, but I can only assume they went for a grey so that it stands out separate to the model because the model itself is in that black tone. Um, but there's something else I don't like about the stand. The model itself is quite heavy and there's a lot of gear there. So if it were to knock or if the table was to like shake, um, then it could easily fall over and get damaged. So I'm not a great fan of the stand, which is why I'm going to be wall mounting it. Um, and I'll go into a little bit about how you do that and I'll show you the instruction manuals and the instructions you're given. Um, I won't actually be mounting it on the wall because I haven't yet got a nail or a hook for it and I haven't figured out where it's going in my room. So here's the instructions for wall mounting the model. Uh, it's on one of the very last pages once you've built the model. Uh, it basically just has a precursor to what wall plugs and screws you should use for your kind of wall. Make sure you check that out. Um, and then fitting the wall plug and then it's got as well as pictures and instructions um, how to access the wall mount uh, which I'll show you in a second um, and then to make sure you just align it correctly uh, reattach all the Lego pieces you've had to remove which isn't a lot it's literally one um, and then yeah just stand back and enjoy your model and then on the other page it's got a lovely picture of what it could look like so yeah that's what the instructions uh, say so I'll show you how to do it. If you go back to the boot, pick one of these red crowbars. Um, this two by four tile, grey tile, that is the seat of the cockpit. If you lift up that bottom one using the crowbar at the front, like that, and don't drop it back in, and pull that out. It's a bit fiddly. Hence why I use the crowbar. You can see just there is the hole for where the nail or screw or whatever fixing you're going to use on the wall goes. So you then hang the model up, make sure it's aligned, push that back down, crowbar in the boot, and close it. And easy as that. As mentioned earlier in this video, the pure size of the Batwing is difficult to see from the pictures A on the LEGO website and B on the box. So I've got it here side by side comparison with the Star Wars UCS A-Wing and the 2019-1989 um, Batmobile uh, and you can just see that its wingspan is massively wider than the A-Wing um, I'd, I'd probably say equal to the length of the, the Batmobile itself and the Batmobile isn't a short set so hopefully this gives you some form of idea of how big a set this is now we'll take a closer look at the three minifigures that are included in this set taking a closer look at the minifigures, we'll start on the left where we have the boombox goon. Um, he is incredibly detailed and a beautiful minifigure. Uh, I love how he's got uh, an arm decal of a hand of cards just on uh, the side there. He has dice just up there on the collar uh, and a picture of the Joker. 
down there as well as he's carrying a boombox, obviously. Um, because he has no hat piece, he is only a one-faced headpiece, which is fine by me. He's still rocking a pair of sunglasses, and that's awesome. Uh, moving uh, further along, in the middle we have Batman, obviously. Um, he is the same Batman minifigure from the previous 2019 um, Batmobile set, with the same 3D cape, which I significantly prefer to the 2D fabric capes that you usually find with caped minifigures. Uh, he comes with two batarangs, but I only have him holding one um, because you can't throw two at once. So I assume one's just a spare, but you guess you could have him holding two. And then if you go further along, just the very other side here, uh, we have the Mime Joker, which I think personally is a really cool minifigure again. Um, it's different to the Joker you got in the 2019 Batmobile set, that was a purple Joker. Um, this one is black and white and um, just really detailed and very much a representative of what the movie Joker looked like. Uh, he has a quill in his hand. The only bit of colour on him is his lips, which again is exactly the same as the movie. He has a white rosette um, up on his left, on the right of the minifigure. Um, and he has on the back a mini, like half cape, I can't really call you, I guess a waist cape, um, just the only bit of fabric in this set, uh, but again that's fine, that's really cool, um, and I just like the piece all round, uh, in fact the mini, all the minifigures are really cool, um, but this is what I was on about, and the fact that the cape is rubber moulded, 3D, and just much more beautiful, it's a uh, one piece with the cowl, um, and it's specifically made just for this set, and the set for 2019. Presumably you'll get the same um, Batman looking minifigure in the set that came out earlier this year, the Tumblr, um, but hopefully not, but I guess for continuity they'll probably keep it the same, in the same way that they kept the stand the same for the minifigures. Um, so yeah, all around uh, I thoroughly enjoy this set. I think it's a really cool display piece with some really cool minifigures. Um, the continuity with the previous set in 2019 is fantastic. Um, the Lego ingenuity of the bricks to add curvature from straight edged pieces is also like marvellous to look at. Um, so I all around love this piece. Uh, I'm not a huge DC fan, although I'm a Batman fan. Um, so for that reason, the fact that it can fit on the wall and look amazing um, is just a no-brainer no for me. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this review, uh, if you did, uh, give a like and subscribe, um, uh, and yeah. Thank you for listening to this review, I hope you enjoyed.